The next exhibition that explores how Chinese studies was established at ANU is now showing at the Australian Centre on China in the World. Based on the extensive archival research of William Simer and curated by Olivier Krischer and Jack Dunstan, it runs until the 18th of September. Our first two diplomatic representatives in China, Sir Frederick Eggleston, who served in Chongqing during the Second World War, and Sir Douglas Copeland, who served in Nanjing, which returned as China's capital in 1946 until 1948, were heavily involved in the planning of the ANU from the late 1940s. We have a Copeland building at the ANU. Copeland was an economist. Um, he was an economist that played a huge role in controlling the Australian economy during the Second World War. He was the ANU's first Vice-Chancellor. Eggleston was, a, along with Copeland, a member of the Interim Council. And the Interim Council was a body established in 1946. And from then until 1951, the Interim Council was charged with planning the university, deciding what the four research schools, which were Pacific Studies, Social Sciences, Physical Sciences, and the John Curtin School of Medical Research, deciding how those schools would take shape deciding who would be employed in them and deciding what kinds of sub-disciplines would be employed within the, would be established within those schools. And Copeland and Eggleston together, based on their experiences of China, were both adamant that Chinese studies would feature in the ANU's Research School of Pacific Studies. We took off from Bowen, tracked along the Queensland coast, then crossed Cape York Peninsula and the Gulf of Carpentaria. After an overnight stop in Darwin, Dawn found us heading west along the north coast of Java. So Bill Hamilton actually travelled to China as a young diplomat cadet uh, to, be the, to be the accountant in Nanjing. And he worked under Douglas Copeland. And in the exhibition, we actually have footage that he shot on 8mm uh, Kodachrome uh, in colour. Uh, from his trip in 1946. And it shows him leaving North Queensland and going through Singapore and Hong Kong. Also as part of his film, uh, it's a sequence of many different films that have been edited together. It was given to the National Library in 2005. Um, but in this film, it's also you see scenes of him traveling in Beijing, um, in what we now call Beijing. Uh, and, and in the surrounds of Nanjing and so on. So there's many famous sites and as well as candid shots of, of diplomatic life uh, in colour from the late 1940s, uh, which is a, real, a really unique record. After the civil war was coming to a close and it was pretty clear that the Australian government was not going to recognise the new communist government of the People's Republic of China, Bill became, uh, in time, bursar and then registrar um, for the ANU and was here until the 1970s. So somebody who really was part of this diplomatic history in Nanking in the 1940s uh, went on to work at the ANU in such a central role under, ver uh, under subsequent you know, successive uh, vice-chancellors uh, for decades afterwards. <laughs>